Has, uh, are there any further amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Mr. Chairman. For what purposes, have... Mr. Massey, seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to offer. I reserve a point of order, Mr. Chairman. The clerk will report the amendment. The point of order is reserved. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 1808 offered by Mr. Massey of Kentucky. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. The gentleman is uh, recognized for five minutes to explain his amendment. I thank the, uh, the chairman. Um, the bill, the underlying bill that we're marking up today purportedly does two things. Uh, it purports to ban weapons of war, although it doesn't ban the SKS, the M1 Grand, the M1 Carbine, or a variety of other uh, weapons that were designed for the military. But it purports to ban weapons of war and it purports to ban magazines capable of carrying more than 15 rounds. There are exemptions in the bill for federal agencies, sort of a blanket exemption. My amendment is simple. It says that the, uh, the exemption does not cover the Department of Education or the Department of Agriculture for either the 15 round and uh, above 15 round magazines or the so-called weapons of war. I am at a loss to understand why the Department of Education or the Department of Agriculture would need the so-called weapons of war to complete their missions. And um, I would, if, if I may, I would yield to any of the Democrats who want to tell me why the Department of Education needs weapons of war. Uh, Mr. 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 Swalwell, I'll yield Thank to you. you. I would just ask, if they don't need them, why do you need them? And I yield well, back. I would, I would say that they are not weapons of war, but I am taking uh, the intent of Mr. Cicilline on good faith that he's uh, banning weapons of war here. And so I would ask him, why would he ban something that he calls weapons of war? What, why would he allow the U.S. Department of Agriculture or the Department of Education to have what he considers to be weapons of war? He said... These weapons that he seeks to design have characteristics specifically for killing people. If it's, you know, if it's at the USDA, I would wonder, uh, maybe you need to dispatch an unruly animal, but if that's the case, why would he seek to allow them to have weapons that in his, by his definition, and I will yield to him here in a second, are designed for killing people? Yeah, I think that exclusion is included because they both have a law enforcement agencies. The gentleman um, yield? I will yield to the chairman if he would try to answer the question of why that's the right, Department of Education, yes. Department of Agriculture, would need so-called weapons of war. Every such department, including the Department of Education and the Department, every department listed, including the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Education, have their own security forces who might need uh, uh, strong I would, weapons. I would um, I like to ask, why do they need more than 15 rounds and why would they need uh, what the Democrats have mostly characterized as weapons of war if they're not going to war? I, am, I understand that they might need firearms, and, and I understand that the military should be exempt from, from this prohibition, and the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI and the ATF, I'm starting to wonder why the IRS would need weapons of war. And I really have to scratch my head to understand why, it, why an agency that is involved with dealing with the education of children needs weapons of war. And also, you know, maybe, I've got a few articles that I'll submit for the record later on. It is true that the FDA, but you see I haven't, I'm not, I'm not saying don't exempt the FDA. I understand why the FDA wants weapons of war they conduct armed raids on Amish farmers uh, undertaking the crime of selling raw milk. Like, so I, I didn't seek to exclude the FDA from your exemption, but I cannot understand why the USDA, a department tasked with helping farmers, is, needs weapons of war or how they would be able to help farmers with weapons of war if they show up with them. And um, I don't have anybody really who seems to want to answer that question. So I offer my amendment and, and urge its adoption. I think it's common sense. I think it improves the bill and increases f for you all. It's likelihood of, of passage in the Senate, but your bill's probably dead on arrival there anyway, and I yield back. 
Does the gentleman from Ohio seek recognition? Uh, strike the last word, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman is recognized. So, uh, the, the basic principle here is this. Under the legislation, if the legislation passed, law-abiding citizens will no longer be able to purchase an AR-15, the most common rifle in the country. No longer be able to do that. But, but the government will. Even bureaucrats at agencies like, as Mr. Massey's pointed out, Department of Education, Department of Agriculture. Now, something just doesn't seem right about that. It just seems strange to me. Yeah, and I think if you ask, you ask folks in the 4th District of Ohio that I get the privilege of representing, they'll say, what? That, that's what this bill allows? So that's, that's, all, that's all this amendment says. Like, look, FBI, OK. Department of Education, probably not. Prob yeah, I mean, it's like, this is, this is pretty simple. So I'd be happy to yield more time if he's got more to say, but it's as, it's as pretty basic, but I'd be happy to yield to the gentleman from Kentucky. Well, to enter these agencies, you have to go through a metal detector, and uh, they have a civilian mission. They do not have a military mission. And I think Dan Bishop said it well. Uh, this, it really begs the question, are these, and I'm not saying it as well as he did, but how can you say these are weapons of war and then argue that they need to go to agencies that are not engaged in war and should never be engaged in war? And let me just reiterate, a vote for the underlying bill after voting against this amendment is saying that you think that these, what most Americans would think are uh, benign agencies like the Department of Education, we're the government and we're here to help, like the Department of Agriculture, we're the government and we're here to help. Most people don't think they need weapons of war, that they don't have a military style uh, mission. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm not contending myself, I am taking at face value that Ms., Mr. Cicilline and what Mr. Swalwell says that these are weapons of war. They're clearly not weapons of war. If you, if you want to give them to the Department of Education, which is involved in curriculum and whatnot, and the, and the Department of Agriculture, these are not weapons of war. So please yep. either vote for the amendment or vote against the bill. Yield to the gentleman from Florida. The entire reason we have the Bill of Rights is because there are certain rights that have to be reserved to the people, <laughs> not government. And Mr. Massey's amendment shows how this legislation has turned the Constitution and the Bill of Rights on its head. It takes powers reserved to the people, and it deprives the people of those powers and rights, and then it reserves explicitly the very same rights for government. Not for the military, but for like the deputy commissar of pencil erasers at the Department of Education. They want you weak and the government strong. They want you disarmed and the government armed to the teeth. I'm reminded of a quote from Austin Powers, where Austin Powers introduces one of his, co his colleagues as a representative from the militant wing of the Salvation Army. I didn't know he had a militant wing of the Department of Education or the USDA. But I am, I am certainly aware that our fellow Americans are concerned about a very troubling trend where these bureaucracies are getting their own militias and arsenals. It would probably surprise most Americans that just this year, the IRS yeah. has purchased $700,000 worth of ammunition. So when you peel back all the layers of the onion, the party of big government isn't actually against guns and ammo. They're just against you having them because they want a citizenry that is repressed and dominated and ultimately subjected. And by the way, our founders were so brilliant, they knew this would happen. And they knew that the Second Amendment wasn't going to be about hunting or self-defense, but about curating an appropriate balance that is necessary for a free society where we don't have to live in fear that one day some deputy administrator from the Department of Education is going to knock our door down and that as a result of us not having the appropriate protractor, that we're somehow going to be in a, in a disadvantageous position regarding our safety and far more important regarding our liberty. I yield back to the gentleman from Ohio. And to the gentleman from Kentucky. And as the gentleman from Ohio has pointed out several times in this committee, if they want federal agents at the school board meetings, we don't need the Department of Education to go. The FBI is already there. <laughs> now we yield back to the gentleman from Ohio. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. 